Yup, what is going on guys? It is your boy, Jabba Boy, here, and uh, today I'm going to be doing the MotoGP Grand Prix of Valencia plus the Formula One 2014 Brazilian Grand Prix. So, let's get cracking and we'll start with MotoGP. Now, uh, before the, the weekend, before the weekend got underway, or, or during the weekend actually, Suzuki made its debut uh, for a few le for a few years absence with their new bike, which uh, didn't do really well. You would say. I mean, you know, they were right. They were right down. You know, around seventeenth to twentieth. Not really challenging sort of the high hierarchy CRTs, you would say. But, you know, it's their first race. What do you expect? Hopefully next year they'll be very, very competitive. Maybe right up there with the top CRTs. Or maybe with the Hondas or the Yamahas. We'll, we'll see. But at the moment, just really, you know, trying out the bike. Really, you know, getting a, getting a, real, a real feel for it. Um... Uh, was uh, Randy Depunier. Yeah, Randy Depunier was on the bike, the only one on the uh, Suzuki, just uh, getting his feel for the new bike. And uh, yeah, so uh, going into the weekend, going into qualifying, um, it was um, it was very wasn't wasn't very hectic, you would say. Um, at the end, uh, Piero Michele Piero, the wild card for uh, Ducati, uh, got his way into Q2. Good for him. I think uh, as well was Bradel. Bradel was in there, so good for him as well. So yeah, those two moved up into Q2. So going into Q2, um, going into Q2, uh, a lot of people riding to the best of their ability. But one man who exceeded everyone's expectations was Andrea Inioni. Inioni almost got his first pole on MotoGP, which is absolutely unbelievable for him, you know, to get to the front row, to be really close and get really close on getting pole position. That is some effort and some achievement by him that he will be uh, looking to. Uh, to take to uh, Ducati next year, and um, and uh, also Mark Marquez in the dying moments of the session made a mistake. He fell the front. Uh, the front got away from him. He fell off his bike. That was game over. He had to start from fifth or uh, fifth place. His worst of the season. So uh, yeah, lucky for Marquez there. But in the end, it was Valentino Rossi, Valle, you know, not uh, Va Valentino, not get uh, getting his first pole position since 2010 in France. That is that is quite a long that is quite a long you know way away from that. You know, I, I you know I I would, I was really expecting. I was really expecting the last poll to be in like 2013 or 2012. So, yeah, long, a long old poll, a long old non-poll streak, you would say, for uh, Mr. Rossi. So, uh, yeah, congrats to him there. Deserves it. So, moving on into the race, the uh, the threat of rain was in the air, but that didn't uh, that didn't um, that didn't make. That didn't change the course of the start, and uh, at the start it was a good start from uh, uh, it was a good start from Valentino Rossi, but Andrea Nignoli got a better start and got into the lead of the race ahead of Valentino Rossi, and behind him was I think it was Jorge Lorenzo, and then Pedrosa and then Mark Marquez, and um, and also and uh, during the first couple of laps, like I said, the rain was starting to build. The rain was starting to build. A lot of people. We're starting to get anxious of the weather, but in the end, it really didn't pay. Uh, it didn't really uh, make it too. It didn't really make things change, to be honest. So, yeah, it was only there for a few laps, and then it and then it just left. So, yeah, 
and uh, yeah, and then uh, and during that little rain period, the two Ducatis were really making a march to the front of the field. They only got to as high as fourth and fifth, as uh, during that little climb, they uh, battled each other, which was uh, fantastic to watch. So uh, yeah. And then after that, the Ducatis just went backwards. And same with Ineone, to be honest. Uh, Ineone just got caught by Valentino Rossi, who uh, made a move down the inside and got ahead of, uh, of uh, Andrea Ineone, which dropped him down to second place. And then the same thing happened to Marc Marquez. But mind you, Marc Marquez made the mistake, almost went into the back of Rossi, going down, I'm not quite sure what corner that was, but it was the corner, uh, the corner after the back straight. So yeah, he made a mistake off there, but that didn't make too much of a that didn't make that did that didn't make things a big that didn't make it a big problem, you would say. And then and then yeah, like I said, Mark Marquez got ahead of Ineone, and then soon enough, Mark Marquez got ahead of Valentino Rossi. Mark Marquez looking looks so quick during practice throughout all the practice sessions, so you would see. So we were seeing so, so yeah, Mark Marquez got the lead off uh, Valentino Rossi there, and uh, oh, and another thing as well, uh, Ineone, Ineone made a mistake. He uh, I think he he ran wide somewhere. I'm not quite sure. I think it was down by the uh, back end of the uh, track. He managed to get uh, get back on track in in seventh or eighth. But then after that, pitted uh, along with uh, Lorenzo for the uh, wet tyres, but which didn't pay off. Uh, Lorenzo and Ineona were losing so much time that they that they decided to call it a day. Really unlucky. I think it was a really wild gamble, you would say, from Ineona and Lorenzo. You know, I feel like the rain was just mental. I feel I feel I feel like the rain was mentally rather than uh, physically, to be honest, you know. So, yeah, unlucky for Lorenzo and Ideone, but in the end, <coughs> excuse me, in the end it was uh, Marc Marquez who, uh, who won the race, who took his 13th uh, win out of, I think it was 18 races, eight, no, 17, no, 18 races, yeah, I think it was 18 races to uh, beat Mick Doohan's uh, record of 12 in, in a season, which is fantastic, really goes to show how how talented that young boy is, you know, especially in a, especially as he's at a young age, you know, it's just, it's just fantastic to uh, admire and watch, so... Yeah, good on him for uh, achieving that record there. And, uh, yeah, uh, second place was Valentino Rossi. Good ride from him there. And uh, Pedroza as well. Good ride from him as well. Going up from the field. I think it was, I think he started like six or seven. So, good, good ride as well from him there up the field. So, yeah. Ult uh, ultimately, a good weekend. So, yeah. So, moving on into Formula One, Formula One, and uh, before the weekend started, two drivers were confirmed for Sauber, and that was uh, er Marcus Ericsson and um, Felipe Nagia, and uh, yeah, unlucky, f and that, unlucky for Esteban and Satil for losing their drives for, uh, for Sauber, I really feel like uh, both of them deserve deserve another, another, you know, another, a year, another year in Formula 1, uh, with Sauber, to be honest, you know, I know, I know they have been scoring points, but still, you know, they have been alright, they have been, they have been there, there or thereabouts, so, yeah, just unlucky to see Gutierrez and Sittil out, you know, and uh, I hope Nazia and uh, Ericsson, Ericsson moving up from Caterham to Salva there. So uh, good on him for uh, for moving up the grid. And uh, Nazia, I'm I'm excited to see what Nazia can do. You know, Nazia got real close to uh, winning the GP2 championship. 
I really feel like it should have been Palmer who who could have. I really feel like Palmer should have got that silver seat, but you know what can you do? Hopefully he'll get one. Uh, so, uh, sure enough, hopefully he'll get one soon enough. To be honest, because I feel like he deserves it, you know. But good, good. C congrats to uh, Nazia. Deserves it, you know. So. Yeah, but unlucky to Gutierrez and Sitil, like I said. So, yeah, and uh, so good. Going into uh, qualifying, there were some real big threats of rain. This was going to be like the worst in terms of the rain, of the rain, but uh, but there was no rain. So um, yeah, so no, so there was no rain. So it was completely like the qualifying session was completely dry. So, uh, yeah, no wet tyres were needed for that session. So, at the beginning of the session, uh, all the cars made their way out on the track to do their lap times, of course. And uh, during the session, we saw the Red Bulls right down almost at the cut-off point, almost uh, in the uh, drop zone in Q1. Red Bull really struggling with uh, with straight line speeds as they are historically in the past. So uh, you you would you would uh, you would know though that the Red Bull would be right down there, but thankfully they managed to keep themselves out of uh, out of the cutoff area. But uh, the four guys that didn't were Maldonado, Vern. Uh, um, Grosjean and Gutierrez, no, uh, Perez. So uh, those lot were out. Into Q2, um, nothing much I would say happened to be honest. Um, Rosberg leading, uh, leading in Q2 over Hamilton. Rosberg throughout the weekend has been so dominant over Hamilton. And uh, yeah, and, and uh, in the end of Q two, um, just the usual suspects were out of Q of uh, Q two. Uh, Kvyat did post a time in Q two, very oh uh, you would say a very bold maneuver, a very bold uh, decision. To be honest, you know, as they've got that ten place group penalty, but I think a little bit of a missed opportunity because they you never know they could have got into the top 10 maybe got an 8th or a 7th which could have transformed into a 17th rather than what they're going to have which is probably a last place which is 22nd so yeah mate i would i would say half of me is more of like a missed opportunity for Kvyat and uh, the other is a uh, more of like a bold a bold decision by Kvyat so uh yeah, and then going into Q3, um, this was the one that was going to count to where you were going to start in the top 10. And what a qualified it was. Boy, did the Williams put the pressure on Mercedes. Man, they were right up there. Uh, and, um, and so were the two Mercedes on each other. They were putting a lot of pressure on each other. And uh, in the end, Lewis Hamilton uh, made a mistake. He locked up his brakes, and uh, that that uh, lost cost him the chance of getting pole position. And uh, Felipe Massa as well made a mistake, so that cost him a chance of getting onto pole as well. So I think same for Bottas. So that so yeah as well that 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 you know those mistakes that all three of the drivers, bar Nico, um, did had cost them probably a potential of getting pole position. So, unlucky for all those guys, but, you know, what a pole by Nick Rosberg. Thoroughly deserves it. He's been right, he's been really quick throughout almost all the sessions during qualifying. And uh, a potential winner, you would say, for the Grand Prix. So, Moving on to the uh, race, no signs. Uh, there were no dangers of rain, so it were it, so the race were was to start in very beautiful conditions, but very hot at the same time. It was a good start from Lewis Hamilton, but Nico got the better run down into turn one. He managed to Nico managed to keep 
the lead from uh, Lewis Hamilton and um and then uh um sorry um so yeah no, nothing much everyone behaved themselves during the first few laps and then uh a lot of people pitted really early i was expecting uh, i was expecting a lot of people to pit around like lap 10 to 20 something on the on the lines of that but you know the the track was very very hot so blisters were starting to show more degradation was starting to show so you would you you would say it was a no brainer to be honest so uh yeah and uh Nico Rosberg pitted first uh Lewis Hamilton had to keep going he, Nick uh Lewis is Lewis pitted but unfortunately uh Lewis didn't uh, Lewis didn't uh didn't have enough to uh uh to overtake Nico so Nico kept his position over uh, over Lewis Hamilton and then further down the field we saw a good battle between uh we saw a good battle between Alonso and the two Red Bulls they were fighting hard and uh yeah so after the first pit stops Felipe Massa was told that he had a 5 second a five second stop and go penalty which he served on his second pit stop and uh, also as well Valtteri Bottas had some issues on his second pit stop basically what happened was uh, as he was going into the pits uh, basically uh, during his pit stop I mean uh, Valtteri had uh, seat belt issues which uh, cost him a lot of time uh, during, cost him a lot of time during the race which uh, lost him the chance of maybe even getting a podium in the Williams which is unfortunate for him there and uh, big a big big thing happened during, on lap 29 as Nico came in for his pit stop and Lewis Hamilton was pushing as hard as he can Lewis Hamilton made a mistake he his uh, his tyres went off. He spun the car, and uh, thankfully he didn't lose too much time. He just lost a couple of seconds, and uh, yeah. So unlucky for Lewis. I mean, just everyone does this, you know. Everyone has mistakes, you know. Everyone everyone has these sort of moments, you know. I have them. You have them. So it's sort of a natural thing, to be honest, you know. So. Yeah, so unlucky for Lewis there. I think Lewis pushing a little bit too hard. But what can you do? What can you do? I mean, you're in that zone. You're pushing as hard as you can. You know, you're not focusing on uh, backing off and whatnot. So, yeah, just... I can totally understand, you know, his... His mistake there. So, uh, yeah. And uh, Button. Button was doing well. He's running. He was running in fourth. And also he was doing a lot of good racing, uh, particularly with uh, Kimi Raikkonen, really showing to McLaren that he, he 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 deserves to be staying with the team for a couple more years and deserve it, and 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 showing that he deserves to be also in Formula One for uh for a couple of more years as well for that matter. So um, yeah, Jensen, you know, I really hope he does uh, stay. With as we really hope he stays in Formula One, deserves to. You know what we've seen from Brazil shows that he he, he is worthy to stay in Formula One. So uh, yeah, and then uh, Daniel Ricciardo, Daniel Ricciardo. I think it was during forty or uh, lap forty, to lap forty or lap fifty. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo had a problem. It, uh, apparently, it was a, um, a a steering arm failure. So, um, as a result, Daniel Ricciardo was uh, unlucky for Daniel, hasn't retired since the Malaysian Grand Prix, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, frustrating, frustrating, so, yeah, and then, and then, uh, with about 20, to, with, with about 30 to 20 laps to go, the battle was on, Lewis had closed the gap quite considerably, quite considerably, Oh my days! Quite considerably to Nico Rosberg, Lewis pushing as hard as he can 
on Lewis, on Nico Rosberg. The gap uh, as a result was down to half a second, pretty much each lap, you know, on uh, of uh, Lewis's attacks on Nico f during the final few laps. Nico not making any mistakes, uh, and Lewis trying to get ahead of Nico, trying to get into his head, trying to play mind games into, in, uh, trying to play mind games uh, to Nico. But in the end, it was it wasn't enough, and as a result, Nico Rosberg came through to take the win over um, over Lewis Hamilton. And um, and uh, behind them was uh, Felipe Massa. Real, really deserves it, you know. Especially coming from a five-second stop and go penalty, to come to come back and to get third place. That's unbelievable. Really deserves it. And uh, yeah, Jensen Button, like I said, coming in in fourth. Beautiful drive by him. And uh, yeah, so. Before I wrap up the, before I finish up this video, I am going to give you my predictions for Abu Dhabi in two weeks' time. Yep, the gap is now 17 points going into Abu Dhabi. Lewis Hamilton, to win the world title, has to finish in second place or higher, and he is world champion. If he doesn't, then that's, and then, if he doesn't, then Nico Rosberg is world champion. My prediction is that Lewis is going to do it. You know, I know Nico, I know Nico won it, won, uh, I know Nico broke Lewis's uh, little streak that he had there, but I feel like Lewis is going to bounce back and come back with an amazing, an amazing drive to his second world championship. And he, if he does win, if if Lewis does win the championship, he thoroughly deserves it. Same with Nico Rosberg as well, you know, he thoroughly deserves it. Yes, you can argue that Monaco, Spa, those are like really undeserved, undeserved manoeuvres. But, you know, if you cancel them all out, Nick, I think it was, I think honestly it was like a red miss thing. But if you cancel, if you can, like I said, if you cancel all them out, Lewis, Nico... You know, Nico, you know, is an ama has is an amazing driver. You know, but uh, whatever. But whoever wins deserves it, and uh, I feel like it's going to be Lewis that's going to do it. I'm hoping Lewis does it. You know, I feel like if he if he does it, then he deserves it. So uh, yeah, my predictions for the championship is Lewis, Lewis Hamilton's. So. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's it. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. It's your boy, Jim Renee. I'm out. Peace.